Good afternoon everyone and welcome to Army Key Reptiles. If you're new to the channel, thanks for tuning in. Uh, if, you, if you subscribe, it'd be much appreciated. And to all of the uh, existing subscribers, thank you very much for your continued support. So I just want to start by saying I hope everybody's well. I hope everybody's doing okay at this difficult time um, and enjoying some nice weather because it's actually really nice outside at the moment. But today's video is going to be about my pairings and my season in general um, of 2020. So I just want to touch on a few different things um, with regards to follicles and breeding and pairing of snakes. So my season's been a bit strange. I've got some girls that have got follicles now and I've also got some that I was expecting to have had follicles by now that aren't developing much at all and yeah it's a bit of a weird one and there's three reasons why I think this might be. First reason is I started pairing fairly late. I started heavily pairing in sort of January. Uh, I normally start November, December time. Um, second reason I think that we haven't had a very cold winter so no prolonged cold snaps or any decent frost, it's actually been quite mild. And although my room is regulated and all the parameters are pretty stable, the snakes can sense what's going on outside of that. And it does have a slight impact on, you know, even if it's just me walking into the room, um, you know, temperatures are gonna drop a bit and stuff like that, but the snakes know anyway what's going on. So don't know if that's had an impact in this season uh, but the thing that I think is most likely is the, uh, the run-up then to the breeding season so back in 2019 the summer months uh, August September there, that's the time of year when I am feeding my females very well and the reason for that is they need nutrients they need to get their body into a, a good enough condition to build eggs and provide a decent clutch. Um, so, you know, having said that, you get out what you put in, and it's as simple as that. And I've found that time and time again, the more effort you put into making sure your females are in good condition and well fed, it always pays off. Um, the moment you take that pair of tongs and feed that female a rat, that's going to be digested and absorbed and she's going to build herself up to be able to put all of those nutrients into the follicles and the eggs and then when those eggs are laid and go into the incubator there needs to be good enough nutrients then in the egg in the yolk to develop that baby snake and if that nutrients isn't there you're going to get poor clutches um you're going to get i wouldn't say you know if you've got good eggs you've got good eggs but it's important anyway, so I won't go any further into it than that. But basically, in the summer months where I would normally be feeding well, I wasn't in 2019 because I was quite poorly. In, at the end of August, I was in hospital for a week. And yeah, it was quite serious. But after that, I stayed at my parents for two to three weeks. So it was almost like a month then where I was away from my snake room, I was away from my home. I couldn't walk very well, I wasn't able to get about too easily. Um, and they were getting looked after because I've got family that were able to jump in, make sure waters were done and they did get fed. So my snakes were fed at all times but my females weren't fed as optimally as I would like which I'm kind of making up for now because they're still actually feeding like demons, some of them. So it might be that I might have just caught it but I've been a bit late in feeding and pairing or it might be that I just have a quiet season and then next season will be awesome. Either way, I'm happy. Um, nothing, can, you know, I can't do anything about it now. Having said that, I have got quite a bit going on. I've got some females with follicles and I'm still hoping to get uh, results from the Sunset Project uh, confusion project, um, double hats, triple hats, and there's still some good stuff, but it's just a few that I wanted to get going that I don't think are going to. But 
Well, I've looked at the pairings that I've been doing and what I know is going to go and what isn't or, or might not go. And yeah, um, and as for future videos, I've got two coming up. One's going to be on an ultrasound, uh, which I haven't got yet. It's not really a priority um, thing to get delivered at this time. And the other video is going to be on substrate, which could be quite interesting because what I'm going to do is use four substrates which have been commonly used by myself over the years uh, so it's going to be paper, Megazor, Lignocell, RectiChip which I'm going to compare directly with TropiChip because they do the same job and yeah so those those four substrates and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get three adult tubs and each substrate is going to go into three adult tubs so three uh, TropiChip or RectiChip free Lignocell, free Megazorb and free with paper and I'm going to choose females that are feeding the best because what I want to do is I want to test them to the point where when the snakes are defecating you can get a good idea of how absorbent they are like how well it contains the waste to a certain area um, odour control um, feeding because one of the substrates that I've got a, a, a complaint with is at feeding time and maintenance. Humidity is another one. So I'm going to go over all that and I'm going to do it over a space of a few days so you'll be able to see what it was like when it was first, you know, clean and first put in. And then we'll have a look at it after a few days once the, once the snakes have made a bit of a mess. So that should be an interesting one, I think. But today, let's have a look at some pairings. Let's see what I've got going on. There is actually a lot going on behind me at the moment, so we'll have a quick peek at that. Okay, so we'll start off by having a look at the lock that I was talking about. You can see it there going on. And this is quite a nice pairing, basically what we've got. I don't really want to disturb them too much. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so we've got a orange dream calico yellow belly paired with my confusion black pastel. And she has got six or seven decent sized follicles at the moment. Um, I would say they're probably 20 to 30 mil. Um, but again, that's just from feeling with my fingers. So, so that's that one. Uh, next female that I've got with she's probably close to ovulation right now so her follicles are quite a decent size um, she's a beautiful pastel clown uh, an outstanding example um, and she's been also paired with the black pastel confusion but earlier on in the season she was she did get a lock with my hurricane fire um, at the time I was struggling to make a decision between the two um, so a little bit of a messy one, I don't normally like doing that, but she's had more locks of the black pastel confusion um, and you know, I'll be able to tell um, what's what when they hatch anyway, so I'll just have to distinguish between black pastel and confusion and hurricane and fire, which uh, should be quite straightforward. But yeah, so that's that. Um, so what I'm hoping for, I am hoping to be honest that the black pastel confusion gets it because I really want some hat clowns. Um, I would like to try and miss on pewter if I can and get a uh, confusion pastel hat clown or confusion black pastel hat clown or even just straight uh, confusion hat clown would be, you know, would be a winner for me really. So any of that good stuff I would be more than happy with. And then if the hurricane fire did happen to grab the steal the deal then I would hope for any of the combinations really preferably her with Hurricane um, just to add to the Het Clown army but yeah so that's that one um, let's take a look at something else so this is my pastel pied female and she has been solely paired with my fire enchi pied male in the attempt to get 
basically I'd like to get Fire and Enchi into my pied stuff so I can then add it to the other mixture of jeans I've got in with pied which is Orange Dream, Leopard, uh, Yellow Belly and Fire. Um, sorry, not Fire. Orange Dream, Leopard and Yellow Belly. Um, Enchi and Fire would just be really nice additions to that that mixture. Um, I'm not one for stacking jeans. I think just stacking jeans can sometimes be detrimental to the, the overall look of the animal, but stacking jeans that all complement each other is always a winner. Um, and I, I think they're all gonna work together. Enchi, Leopard, Yellow Belly, Orange Dream, and Fire. They're just, they're, they will all work well. So um, that's the plan with those. Uh, I've not actually witnessed a lock yet. I'll just show you the mail. Um, so no locks witnessed, but she is um, building up. But it's a cracking male, and she has got some uh, small follicles. So something is going on, but I just hope the job is done. You know, without witnessing a lock, I'm not sure. But if I don't see any locks. I don't know what to do, but if she starts growing bigger follicles, whether to, you know, I don't want any slug outs. I would like to witness a lock. Um, but yeah, we'll have a look at the next. So this is another girl that I'm hoping is going to go. She is one that I produced myself. And she's in deep, deep shed, so she's looking pretty dull. But she's a GHI pastel het red exanthic. Uh, she was produced from um, GHI Mojave Yellow Belly going across a pastel gargoyle. And she has been paired with a GHI Mojave Yellow Belly male. So that would be my attempt to hit on super GHI combos, which I'd also like to see Yellow Belly in with. Um, a yellow Belly just makes GHI pop. I've got another one that I produced from, was it the same clutch? I think it was the same clutch. This one's a GHI pastel. She is outstanding quality. Um, so that's GHI pastel, yellow belly, super bright. She's gonna be one for next year, I think. I haven't paired her up. Uh, she's not doing bad weight wise, but I'm not too fussed about getting her paired just yet. Um, but yeah, so that's another pairing. She's in, she's in really good um, condition for breeding. She's at a really good weight. Uh, so I'm hoping she does produce something. She is one that reabsorbed last year and her follicle development was late anyway, late in the year. So I'm hoping that she does the same again this year, but actually goes, goes through with um, producing some nice eggs and you know ovulating. But yeah, let's look at the next one. So this one is another self-produced GHI combo. And she is a black pastel GHI yellow belly. And she has been packing the multis away. And she's in really good condition. She's a bit grumpy, she goes for me quite often. But she is going into the sunset project. So I'm hoping it would be awesome if I could replicate this animal as a het sunset. Um, if I'm lucky enough to do that, I'm pretty confident she is gonna produce this year, um, just because of the way she's feeding and he has been locked with her two, three times. So, oh, you see, she's a little bit, a little bit scatty that one, but put her away and let her get back to it. So that's that one. So this girl is one that I wanted to get into the confusion project and I think she's having a year off, bless her, which is fine by me because she did an absolutely outstanding job last year. She was paired with my Orange Dream Leopard Yellow Belly Double Het Clown Pied and she produced some stunning babies as you've probably seen a couple of them in the previous videos. And she's not been feeding quite so regularly. I uh, don't think she's gonna go, but a little bit disappointing but they do benefit from having some time off. So she'll just uh, wait till next year. So moving on. So this next one is 
also a very ravenous feeder. She literally only fed yesterday and she would eat another one. You can see the way she, you know, she packed up then she would happily take another one, but obviously I'm not gonna feed them the day after. Um, but her condition is showing me that, you know, she looks like she's gonna produce something, but she's an Orange Dream and she uh, spot nose. And she's also gone into the sunset project because I would like to work spot nose. I've already got Enchi and a visual sunset combo and not got Orange Dream in yet. So that'll be another good one, but I'm most looking forward to the spot nose as I think it's going to work really well um, with sunset. So not quite sure if she's got follicles yet. I've only palpated her once or twice and I'm pretty sure she is going to have the next time I check. Um, but yeah, there's another one, so some really nice hats to hold back there for, for that project. Let's have a look at something else. Okay, so this one is quite high up, so I'm not really going to be able to... I'm going to have to take her right out, guys. Bear with me with the camera. It's quite difficult doing this on your own. Um, because my wife, she's offered to help before, but when we've got Vinny running around, it's not that practical. So I'm having to do it on my own. Um, but this is now one of my favorite females. Every time I see this girl, she is just outstanding. So she is a, I've got no experience of hypo to be honest guys, I'll be honest. So this is the first time I've added a hypo animal to the collection. She came from a good friend of mine, Lawrence. And um, she's a TSK Extreme Line hypo. Um, clown and she is also going into the sunset project so my attempt to make some triple hats which would be awesome but yeah I've got two sunset males so the work's being shared around um, I'm not overworking I'm not a fan of overworking males um, but yeah really excited for that one and the way she's been feeding on our multis I think she could well do it. She just wants multis all the time. But yeah, there's that girl. Let's have a look at something else. This one I've already pulled down because it was another top shelf one. As you can see, it's a female cinnamon 50% hat sunset. And this was a disappointment because this is one that I held back from 2017 and I introduced my sunset breeder male. Uh, I had a lot of thrashing and banging going on in the tub. So I thought, what's going on? Opened it up. I mean, that can sometimes happen anyway, because you know, when males go in with females, sometimes they just want to show their dominance and so, like thrash about a little bit, but then they settle down and lock up. But this was more like when you see them wrestling and they sort of twist up and wrap around together and. So I pulled this guy out and popped him to huge hemipenes. So this is now surplus to requirements, which surprised me because he's a good 1800 grams. He grew up really fast, but that's just the way it goes. It's a lesson to me that I need to more thoroughly check my holdbacks because when I sell snakes and move them on, I do make sure that they are the sex. You know, they go out as the sex I say because because it's going to somebody else, I feel like I've got more of a responsibility to get that sex bang on. But when they're holdbacks, I'm a little bit more, um, what's the word, blasé about it. So if I pop a, fem uh, a snake and it looks a female and I decide I want to keep it, generally I won't check that one too much again because it's a holdback. So that's a lesson to me to be more on top of that um, moving forward. It's only happened once or twice to be fair, and this is one of them. So. That was that disappointment, so if anybody wants a pot at sunset, let me know. <laughs> this next one is uh, was actually from the same clutch as that male we just looked at. And she is a butter cinnamon 50% hat, so she was produced by myself in 2017. She's really deep and shared. Um, but she's a cracking size and in perfect condition. Um, so I'm hoping she's going to produce something. She's slowed down on the food, which makes me think that um, I need to check her follicles again and see if they're developing. But I think she could be 
on the way to producing something. So that would be nice if she does prove out. That means that I've got another proven hat sunset female and I could potentially get the sunset combinations from the butter and the cinnamon in the clutch, which would be cool. I've not used the pastel sunset, I've used the, the straight sunset male. So looking forward to that one anyway, so fingers crossed. If not, it'll be another one for next year, but yeah. Right, this one was a little bit of a controversial one for me um, because it took me ages to decide what to do because here we've got an orange dream fire, which is absolutely stunning, Het Pipe, which I produced uh, 2018. And the male that I've used for this girl, and we've had a couple of locks. She's in good breeding condition, but no follicles as of yet. She's a first timer. Um, so the male is a fire entry pied. Now, as a lot of you know, there's a massive clash there because I could potentially produce white animals, um, the black or leucistics, which could cause not a problem, but a bit of an unknown because I'm gonna have, or I could have then potentially, an orange dream, enchi, uh, super fire pied, and I wouldn't know it. Um, but on the other hand, it could just be a straight super fire um, het pied. So I thought, well, you know what, I'll give it a go. If I get white snakes, they've got to be hold backs, whether they're male or female, and I'll just go from there. Uh, hopefully I'll miss on them and I'll just get, you know, hats, het combos and visuals that are orange dream fire enchi uh, in the mix. But, you know, what can you do? I'll give it a go and see what happens. So that's another pairing I've got going on. Next we've got a clown female, which I have paired with both my pastel sunset and straight sunset, mainly to just share the labor and as to not to overwork my straight sunset. But you know, either way I would be happy. Um, the only difference being if I get pastels out, uh, you know, the double, a pastel double hat as opposed to a normal double hat. I'm not too worried about that. She's been feeding very well on rats for quite a long time and she has slowed down as well. So I'm thinking she might be up for breeding, although I can't feel anything at the moment. But she is one of those chunky girls where I've got quite small fingers. So if she has got follicles, they will be difficult for me to feel. But hopefully the ultrasound will see something when we get that. But yeah, that's another one, so some double hats. This is my adult hurricane female. She's a 2017, uh, great condition. Um, been feeding very well. She's been locked three times, I think, I've got on record. And she's got small follicles, uh, which have got bigger, so I'm hoping that they're gonna start developing pretty well now. and. Yeah, uh, the pairing for this, I'm gonna keep it to myself for a minute just because it's one of my, it's probably gonna be my favorite project eventually. And um, yeah, I just wanna keep it under wraps for a minute, but uh, hopefully if I do, if it works as well as I think, you'll get to see it at some point, but it might be a long time. So I'm quite excited about that. But yeah, we'll uh, have a look at something else. This next one is the third or second double hat project then. Uh, again, sunset. Um, so I wanna go for the double hat sunset pides. And this female did go last year, but out of my three, or well, sorry, my two standard pied girls, this one is the one I think is most likely to, to go again this year, because she's in the best condition and she recovered very well from her clutch last year. Um, my original 2012 female. And it's a bit awkward because you've got to strike a balance between knowing when you've got too many projects going, but at the same time, not all of your females will go, or it's unlikely that they'll all go. So you want to almost have that backup there. You know, if there's three females you want to go, maybe one or two of them will go. But at the same time, you've got to be aware that if all three of them go, then you're going to have a lot of babies and a lot of projects on the go. So that could be, you know, a problem. But Striking the balance is a bit difficult, but that's that project. So, this female again was a 
self produced from 2016. Just shed and looking good. She's a, I've got her there as a leopard kingpin, but she's actually got vanilla in her as well. And she uh, proved that last season as she gave me some vanilla cream combos in with the hurricane stuff. But yeah, my plan for that is again the black pastel confusion, just because I like the way that confusion works with pinstripe. I think it um, produces some really cool looking animals and having leopard in there as well would be a bonus. For confusion, my aim would be to get yellow belly in, which I'm hopefully gonna do with the orange dream uh, calico yellow belly that we looked at earlier at the start. And pinstripe's another one, leopard is another one. Uh, and I wouldn't say no to having all the others in there to be honest, but the pattern mutations are the ones that I'm looking forward to. And then the colors to add would, you know, hopefully just make it look cool. But yeah, so that's that project. I think she's going to go, I don't know though, she's fed really well and again is in really good condition. But I think the last time I checked I couldn't really feel, feel anything yet, but we'll see. Last uh, breeder female that I'm going to show guys and she is my original um, Hat Sunset female Lemon Blast that produced my very first visual sunsets and she had a year off last year. Uh, she's a live feeder, uh, both both the female hats I've got is a live feeder which it does make it a bit difficult uh, bringing, bringing them on because they're slightly more fussy even with live sometimes they just randomly go off for a couple of weeks and then they'll all of a sudden start eating again. Um, I hate feeding live um, but these snakes they require it and I have tried to convert. I did manage to get one of them to take a freshly killed one uh, at some point, but it is really hard work. And generally if I don't, you know, feed these guys live, they will sort of starve themselves and I'm not going to do that. Um, sometimes it is a necessity, unfortunately. And same thing goes for getting hatchlings going, which will be in another video. I'll talk about how uh, I get hatchlings going but it does involve sometimes uh, live food for the greater good and you know once it's done it's done you can get crack on and move on to, to defrost but um a bit of a touchy subject maybe but i'm just going to put it out there because it is what it is um and another thing i wanted to touch on is hides because i did have somebody ask if i'm using uh, ars tubs which are opaque or almost opaque to the point where they don't really let in a lot of light. Um, I still, the snakes still enjoy using these from a security point of view. And even if it's not to do with light, it is to do with them touching sides of something and just being in that close confined space like they would be in a burrow and just feeling more secure. So that is why I still use hides even in these, for the females that enjoy them anyway, for the ones that aren't really fast I will take them out um, and that's fine but yeah I just wanted to answer that question and yeah sorry this girl has been paired with my sunset male uh, I won't show her again you've already seen her and not quite sure if she's gonna go yet um, but if she does it's just another chance of me producing some more more visual sunset animals but that's where I'm going to draw the line on the parents, guys. So out of all the ones I've shown you, however many go, I'm not sure. Um, you know, last season I only had six clutches, which is quite a small season. And if I got six clutches again this year, I would be more than happy. But let's jump up back to the uh, tripod and we'll wrap this video up. So that's it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. I just wanted to touch on one more thing before I go, and that is to do with follicle development and starting, you know, promoting, stimulating it. Because when I talk about timing pairings uh, by checking growth with like an ultrasound or palpating, if they haven't got follicles, that doesn't mean I'm not pairing. Because it's like I said at the start of the video, if, if I started pairing earlier last year, maybe the follicle development would be a lot further forward now than what it is. 
and that's because myself and probably a lot of other people agree that by putting the males in with the females it stimulates and promotes follicle growth. I'm not aware that females will just randomly start developing follicles without any presence of a male, although it's possible maybe it does, I don't know, it's not something I've, it's not a principle I've worked off, I've always put males in to start follicle growth um, and I've always just assumed that that is the case. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to, to just clear that up really. But again, I appreciate you all watching and I'll see you on the next one. I'll get all that substrate sorted and set up, ready to go, and you can have a look and make up your own mind as to what you think's best and what you want to use. But this will be my opinions anyway, so see you next time. Cheers.